Greetings everyone! A few weeks ago I got the chance to play around with a new Fuji camera which was the first to feature their new 40 megapixel sensor which happens to be the highest resolution APS-C sized sensor on the market today, the Fuji X-H2. It's big and a thing of beauty to be sure and the H designation is indicating a hybrid concept equally capable of shooting a broad mixture of stills and video. I wasn't very excited by this camera at first because, after testing a couple of Canon cameras with only 32.5 megapixel sensors, I already knew that most camera lenses aren't really sharp enough to make that kind of resolution even fully possible on an APS-C sensor. But Fuji also let me borrow a copy of their new 56mm f1.2 lens, which utterly put paid to that little notion in my mind, and there's a link to my review of it down in the description below if you want to find out more. So, armed with a lens sharp enough to actually resolve 40 megapixels, I was all set to have some fun, although it doesn't quite have the speed of Fuji's also new X-H2S camera, it has extra resolution, and in terms of features, it is the most technically advanced camera Fuji have yet made. I'd like to thank Fuji UK for loaning me this camera for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this will be a totally independent review. At a retail price of US dollars or about £1,900 here in the UK, it's obviously a premium camera, but considering that it has a lot of the resolution and speed features of competing mirrorless full-frame cameras which cost a heck of a lot more, it could be considered really good value if it's any good, perhaps even a competitor to my beloved Canon EOS R5. The camera looks classy and feels rock solidly made, a little boxy in its design perhaps, but very comfortable and tactile to hold, and Fuji claim it is highly weather resistant, although obviously you'll want weather resistant lenses to go the whole hog. Fuji are ditching their classic design with all the controllable dials here, but actually I kind of preferred using this more modern style, it's certainly a bit quicker to handle those who like the classic design will be able to get the X-T5 instead when it comes out soon. But still, on this X-H2 camera there are plenty of controls, many customizable, and I personally quite like the useful white balance button, and the large joystick button for focus points feels much more tactile and clickable than on my old X-T3 Fuji camera. I also really liked the top screen, which gives lots of information while also looking very cool, a thoughtful substitute for the information you'd otherwise glean from the classic dials of previous Fuji cameras. The camera has a dual card slot for CF Express Type B and for SD cards up to the UHS-2 standard, which is my favourite combination, CF Express if you want speed, SD for compatibility and cost effectiveness. The battery is large and powerful, and in my experience it would happily shoot a couple of hours of video or about 700 still pictures, sometimes even more. The camera's screen is excellent, bright with a very high resolution and an intuitive touch interface, and I loved the camera's fast and high resolution viewfinder too, which offers a rather enormous image, running at up to 120 frames per second, which is overkill for me, quite frankly. A special fan sold separately can be attached to the back of the camera to keep it cool when shooting 8K video. There are plenty of useful ports on the side of the camera too, USB-C for charging, which will work with a phone charger, as well as microphone, headphone and a full-sized HDMI port. Are you listening Canon? We want full-size HDMI ports, follow Fuji's example. Despite the camera's very high resolution, its maximum frame rate with the mechanical shutter was a blazing 15 frames per second, and the camera's buffer was seriously impressive. Here it is shooting RAW and JPEG together, and it just keeps going and going, taking many hundreds of 40 megapixel images with no sign of slowing down. I like the subtle sound of its shutter mechanism too, it sounds gorgeous and quite soft, although the camera does of course also have an electronic shutter mode, which can work at up to 20 frames per second, and at a mind-boggling maximum speed of 180,000th of a second. The mechanical shutter's durability is rated at a massive 500,000 actuations, meaning you'll have to do a lot of shooting before wearing that thing out, don't be afraid to buy a second-hand one of these cameras. 
This is the first Fuji camera I have tested with in-body image stabilization. Considering how good Fuji's stabilizations have always been, even before they were making X-mount cameras, I wasn't surprised to discover it holding my images very steady, whether in stills or in video mode. Another great feature, particularly as Fuji are famous for their excellent prime lenses, most of which are not optically stabilized. They rate this in-body image stabilization as offering up to seven stops of assistance. Although from personal use, I'd give a more conservative estimate of five or six stops, but that's still pretty fantastic. When it comes to autofocus, the camera is fairly quick off the mark and has all kinds of useful subject tracking modes, including animal and human eye autofocus. It works accurately, even when shooting at very bright apertures, tracking quite nicely, although not as confidently as my Canon cameras can manage. I also wish there was a little more control in this mode for tracking different eyes. The camera even has a car tracking autofocus mode as you can see here. Again, the camera had no problems doing that so long as the autofocus motor on the lens is fast enough. Some Fuji lenses are a little slow when it comes to autofocus. Overall, I really enjoyed handling the X-H2. It's intuitive, customizable, thoughtfully laid out, fast, Fuji have just thrown everything they have into it. The only criticism I'd have is that its autofocus system, while easy to use and quite accurate, just doesn't have quite the same speed and confidence in use as Canon or Sony's systems. Apparently its faster brother, the X-H2S, is better in this regard with its faster sensor. Okay, let's look at what kind of image quality that 40 megapixel sensor can give us. I took these test pictures with a new Fuji XF 56mm f1.2 Mark II lens with the aperture stopped down to f4, which is more than sharp enough to fulfill this camera's 40 megapixel sensor. Let's take a quick look at the raw image quality first, up against JPEG. Unlike other Fuji cameras, including its sister X-H2S, the X-H2 has a base ISO of 125, which is reassuring for applications with slower shutter speeds. Now, the raw image is showing tons of fine detail, as you'd expect from a 40 megapixel sensor. The JPEG image looks good, but a little over sharpened, leading to a smudging of fine details, I think, which is visible on a rock face in this picture. The JPEG still looks very good, but I've been getting increasingly concerned by over sharpening on Fuji JPEG engines, and this was with the sharpening set to zero. Still, the image is showing a great level of detail. Well, let's see how the camera copes at higher ISO levels now. In the top left, you see ISO 125. Below that, ISO 400 is virtually as good. ISO 800 begins to see just a touch of noise, but nothing serious. However, ISO 1600 is beginning to see quite noticeable noise, with colors and contrast and fine detail all beginning to suffer. Let's push the ISO even higher, where unfortunately we see further deterioration with 3200 looking rough and shooting at 12800 would only be an act of desperation. So the X-H2 offers plenty of detail in its images, but as you'd expect from a 40 megapixel sensor, high ISO noise levels are a bit high, a little worse than on my Canon EOS R7 I'd say, although that Canon camera only has a 32.5 megapixel sensor, so it seems like quite an even trade-off between resolution and noise here. On the subject of resolution, this camera does have a pixel shift high resolution mode, able to generate 160 megapixel images. It's accessible via the drive button on the back of the camera. I had mixed luck with it though. You must use a tripod and keep your camera perfectly still, while it takes a grand total of 20 raw images for you to stitch together using Fuji's special software back home on your computer. 20 images are needed because of the unconventional design of the camera's X-Trans sensor. The final composited images would often have slight defects or some colourful blurs or just not looking that great. When they did come out properly, they sure do catch a lot of detail, but they will also benefit from you adding a fair bit of extra sharpening and contrast in editing. Still, landscape photographers with sturdy tripods could get some real mileage out of that feature. 
Now let's take a look at video quality, with a camera offering all kinds of video shooting modes, standard H.264, H.265, even my favourite Apple ProRes, and 10-bit recording, even raw recording if you plug in an external recorder. However, the headline feature is of course its 8K capability, at up to 30 frames per second, the first on an APS-C camera. Here's some footage shot at 4K on the left, 6.2K in the middle, and 8K on the right. The 4K and 6.2K footage is oversampled by the camera, with the 6.2K looking particularly impressive. I found that shooting 8K only really offered a very small advantage in detail over 6.2K, as you can see here, so in most cases, I'd recommend sticking with 6.2, unless you're desperate for every last drop of resolution. By the way, the camera seemed to have no real overheating problems when shooting in 8K, with Fuji claiming it could go up to 160 minutes before overheating. Stop down to ISO 800 and a little noise is emerging in the footage. ISO 1600 is still acceptable, but 3200 is looking really rough. 6400 is even worse, and 12800 is unusable. So the camera is capturing loads of detail, but again, high ISOs are a problem, which is where you'll see a big difference if you're shooting on a full frame camera in 8K, such as the previously mentioned Canon EOS R5. Something that's been well publicised is that this camera's sensor is a bit slower than that of its X-H2S brother, so let's take a look at rolling shutter. Shoot at 1080p, or at standard 4K, and it's noticeable, but not out of control. However, step up to 4K fine mode, or 6.2K or 8K modes, and it gets considerably worse, so this may not be the camera you want to shoot your next action movie with. Well, those are some of the key specs and features of the Fuji X-H2. I haven't even touched upon those lovely Fuji film simulations, offering endless exploration, HEIF support, as well as practical things like wireless control from a computer and flicker reduction. Alongside the camera's wonderful build quality and image stabilisation, it all adds up to a generous package for your money, making a wonderful user experience, and overall I absolutely loved my time working with the X-H2. Admittedly, it's a camera with a few niggles, and they tend to be in areas where a more expensive, premium, full-frame camera would take the advantage. I would have preferred less aggressive sharpening on JPEGs out of the camera, and the trade-off for its dense 40 megapixel sensor comes in noisier image and video quality at higher ISO levels, so this won't be a great camera for shooting video in the dark, or for stills photography at very high shutter speeds. That will obviously be the domain of the more sports-oriented X-H2S camera. You should also bear in mind that this sensor will need very sharp camera lenses in order to realistically resolve 40 megapixels in the first place. Thankfully, Fuji's newer prime lenses are up to the challenge, but they will set you back a lot more money. And the 160 megapixel pixel shift mode, while awesome, also takes a bit of practice and just plain good luck to work well. It's also rather a big camera, although as a result, it does fit into your hand a bit more comfortably. Honestly though, I loved testing the Fuji X-H2 because of its combination of great power and a seriously enjoyable user experience. With the right lens attached to its 40 megapixel sensor, its images will burst with a detail that reminds you of shooting full frame, and the camera's build quality and features are enormously fun. It obviously comes recommended, because it's clearly the Fuji equivalent of my Canon EOS R5, and I love my R5. Just make sure you get some of those beautiful Fuji lenses, have some extra money spare, and you'll be absolutely laughing.